Hey there, welcome back. Now in this lecture, let us discuss about two or three important things. The first one is we need to understand how to create our token while registration. So if you remember our previous logic while registration, we are returning a token during the token authentication lecture. So if you just jump onto this view part, here you remember we are returning this token, this type of token. So we need to do something similar for our access token as well as refresh token. The second thing is when we jump here with this token information, we return a user ID. So if I try to use different token for different user, is this going to get updated? We are going to find out. And what are the disadvantage as well as advantage of using this JWT token? So let us do everything step by step. The first thing I'm going to do is just log in as a different user. So I'm going to use my other account, which is example one. I think this was the account we created. Yeah, example one. So I'm going to log in with example one. Send a request. Here we got a response. So I'm going to copy this one. Get back here, jump onto my JWT token website, submit this. And here you can see I got a information that this is user eight. And if I open this one, you can see this is user eight, the ID is eight. So that means each token carries this information. If I jump back again, try to get information through refresh token. Now, if you see here, you can see this is again user eight. So each token is unique for each user itself. This was something important, which most of the users, most of the student don't know about. The second thing is how to create token manually. Here, if you remember, we are accessing this token and then sending this information in our dictionary, or I should say JSON response. What I'm going to do is I'm going to follow something similar. Let me jump back here, get onto the documentation part and minimize this one. Here you will see an option called creating tokens manually. Just click here and you can utilize this method to create access token manually. Let me copy this one. Now after registration, I'm going to send this information manually. So let me import this. We are going to import this from our package dot tokens, then refresh token class. Now let me jump back here. I'm going to just comment this. And here I can call this class, which is refresh token. I need to just pass my user information and then I can send a return. So I can get this access information and send this in the form of data itself. Let me do that first. Here I need to pass my user information so I can directly pass this account. And the next thing I just need to do is I need to overwrite my data token. Here I'm going to send a dictionary inside a dictionary. So let me copy this part. This looks fine. So this is a data dictionary inside this. We have token as key and we are defining this. Either we can do one thing, I can just call this as refresh and send this information and create another variable called access and send this information. We can do anything, but uh, let me try to do this first. So all I have to do is utilize my old registration link. The second thing is make sure you remove this models for now because we are not auto generating our token now. So if you remember in our models.py, we were creating this auto generation of token. I'm going to remove this for now. So I'm not going to import it. Now the next thing is let's jump onto our registration link. Here I'm going to utilize my link. Uh, let me use account slash register. And I need to send a post request, get into my body. And here I need to select the form data. Here we need to pass username. I'm going to call it as example seven. Then I need to pass email. Then my passwords. 
so this will be password and this will be password 2 this looks fine let me send this request we got an error uh, yeah definitely the most common error let me send a request and if you don't remember the error was that we are not including a slash as mentioned in the URL part so make sure you don't forget this slash let me jump here click on pretty and here now we have access token as well as refresh token as response I hope you got the idea how we are going to do that so that's done for registration part that means as soon as a user register we are sending these access as well as refresh token and also now if they log in they are going to have access to this information as well so this was the another important part which i really wanted to cover now the next part is the advantage as well as the disadvantage of jwt if i need to sum up so the simple advantage is we are not dependent on database for every request once we have this information we can carry it anywhere also we can customize their time if you want this is simple all you have to do is just get onto this settings part and here you have access token lifetime and you can change the time all you have to do is just follow this instruction you need to import time delta then you need to import these two setting by default access token is 5 minute change this according to your setting and refresh token is one day so most common setting the current website follows is access token can remain as 5 to 15 minute and refresh token can go up to 14 days so this is the common setting now this is something advantage to control information as well as not sending load to our database but the biggest disadvantage is we are caching information and storing it here for next 5 minute so which can create problem we cannot revoke this access token even if we want that means for the next 5 minute we cannot revoke this access so when we were using this token authentication not the jwt1 but the normal token authentication we had the power to revoke the access we can delete it through database but now we don't have that power we cannot delete this information and this can create problem if we don't have this power so for the next five minutes i don't have the power to revoke this access token let me try to do one thing let me try to log in as a new user i think uh, this example three let me log in as example three let me send a request here we got our access token right and let me copy this one and try to access this review we are just sending a get request that means we are not editing anything paste this one send a get request so we are able to access and this get request can only be sent by someone who is currently authenticated let me try to get the list again so let me try to get list of reviews for movie number five so if i send a request you can see i'm able to access it and if i jump here onto my views part this review list can only be accessed by someone who is authenticated and we are authenticated with example 3 as user this is example 3 token and we are accessing it if i just don't use the authorization part i cannot access it here i can access it now let me try to delete this user so we are using currently this access token of 3 and the review is by example 1 i guess so let me try to delete this user which is example 3 uh, let me open this one we have delete option delete this user this is example 3 and let me try to send a request now here you can see we don't have any active user if i try to log in that means if i try to send a token request but if i try to access this review with my old token we got user not found now here it means we can only revoke access by deleting user otherwise we don't have control over individual users for different setting and this cannot be controlled since tokens are not stored in database i hope you got the point so that's all for this lecture these are the important things regarding jwt authentication and if you need to log out the front end guy can do that by deleting the information about access as well as refresh from your local storage of browser itself.
So that can be done from front end if you are using Angular or any other framework. That's all for JWT authentication. It's a pretty important topic which is not covered by many courses and most of these students are properly not aware about this. Now here I'm giving you a quick homework. The first thing you should do is just jump onto this documentation and try to edit these settings. So just simple setting, import this date and time in settings.py and update these two information. That's it. Try to play with Postman regarding your refresh token as well as access token. That's all for this lecture. Now I'm going to remove all these settings so we can continue where we left in the previous lecture. There are chances that a big section of student just skipped this lecture because this was optional. So I'm just going to remove them. You can access these files. These are small minor changes and you can just copy them either uh, from JWT authentication site or I will just comment them. So these changes are not going to stay active in the next lecture and we will continue with our previous lecture setting. That's all. I hope this lecture was helpful. Thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one.